What's up, all you cool cats and kittens? Uh, all right, here's your learning target for today. We've got two of them. Uh, stoichiometry and molarity. Uh, all right, stoichiometry. We pounded this back in regular cam and cam. Um, the process of calculating relative amounts and reactants in a chemical reaction. So basically what we want to do is we want to say, hey, if I put this much in, how much will I get out? So um, how much can you make? How much do that? So if I put two cookies, I'm cooking uh, cookies. If I put four cups of sugar in, how many cookies should I be able to make with four cups of sugar? Um, there's something important to know that what we did for balancing was just all about what we call mole, uh, moles, right? So like in this equation here, if there's just one there, two there, one there, what this means is it just means one mole, two moles, and one mole. Remember, a mole is just the number. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? And what we know from that is we can just say like, hey, if I have one mole of carbon monoxide and two moles of that, I will get one mole. So from balancing, what we can say is that that's kind of the base equation. Um, and with that base equation, the chemical equation, you have a standard recipe, and, and you can deviate from that uh, with, with what we call stoichiometry. Uh, just a simple question here, what is the mole ratio of water to nitric acid? So I have one mole, so when it asks you to find, you can write it either way, one mole of H2O for every two moles of HNO3. Okay, so basically what we have is we have just like a, in a way to say like, oh, okay, I could write it the other way. I could write two moles of nitric acid, HNO3, for every one mole of H2O. All right, so mole ratio is, can do anything with the balanced chemical equation. It's just our standard recipe. Um, if you remember way back, in the day we had this thing called the stoichiometric roadmap. Okay, so what this is, is I shortened it a little bit because we can essentially do this. So here's what, we, here's what we know. This is the given number from the problem. Okay, these three brackets here are what you're going to fill in every time. It's the same thing, same process every time. All right, so um, this these two right here are what we call the molar mass, okay? So it's always gonna be one mole here, and one mole here. Add up whatever compound you have, add up whatever compound you have, and then this middle bracket is what our mole ratio is, and it comes from our balanced chemical equation. All right, so we'll just do a problem here, and you can see it. So here's the problem. I have 25 grams of sodium uh, oxide, and I wanna figure out how much sodium hydroxide I can make. So use the map from the last little page and uh, we can fill that in or and uh, I just gotta fill it in and then you do it as well okay there you go so all I did to figure out the brackets here is just use my map so this 61.97 I just took two sodiums and one oxygen and I added it up and then one Na one OH and added it up where'd I get these numbers from well, I just took them from the mole ratio. Now, the, the trick is this, is you have to make sure that whatever comes, whatever you just follow, you can use the map or you can just follow your brackets. So like this is one mole from there. This is two moles of H2O, right? Sorry, back that up. Two moles of NaOH. Okay, and then to, this is grams of NaOH, all right? So the big key is this. Just make sure your, your units line up, and this matches that, this matches that, this matches that. Or you can just use your roadmap and do it a handful of times and be really good at it. So same thing every time. It allows us to say, hey, if I have this amount of grams, well, what is it? Go ahead and do this problem here using the equation. Two moles of hydrochloric acid plus sodium sulfate goes to, if you want to produce 3.5 grams of sodium chloride, how many grams of sodium sulfate should you start with for the reaction? The question is asking is this, I'll help you set it up. Okay, you, whatever you're given, 
goes on the left. So 3.50 grams of sodium chloride is what I want to make. I want to figure out how many grams of sodium sulfate I need. All right, so essentially what I'm doing, I'm saying, hey, like, hey, I want to make this many cookies. How much do I need? And that's how you would set it up. Okay. Uh, there you go, 3.5. So now on your calculator, uh, let's just look at this. Oh, for the record, you can always look up molar masses on Google every time. You just type in the compound and figure that one out. Um, so for the calculator, you can just multiply across the top or divide, then divide by the bottom. Or if you have a nice TI-83, just use parentheses and punch in exactly what you see um, with that. I was going to do it, but I think you guys can manage doing that. If you set it up right, you'd be okay. All righty. There's some more problems in your worksheets. You can check your answers later doing that. Um, okay, there's just a couple little twists on, on stoichiometry. If you're uh, for sure we're in honors chem, we talked about it, but there's a thing called limiting reactant and excess reactant. So basically, whatever reactant runs out first, the excess reactant is what's left over. So, uh, for example, if I'm making uh, if I'm making uh, cookies, I don't know why cookies are in my mind today, but cookies. Um, if I have four eggs. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to keep making enough uh, eggs or enough cookies as I can with the amount of eggs. As soon, well, as soon as I run out of four eggs, I'm going to stop making cookies, the final product. So that would be an example of our limiting. But I have tons of flour and sugar left over, so that really doesn't limit how much I can produce. This is what the eggs can limit how much I can make. If you can't tell, I'm not a baker. I don't ever make cookies. All right, so here's the here's the only thing that we do differently. I'll just show you how to set it up. You can do the calculations later, okay? So write a balanced chemical equation. So we have, here's, well, I'll do a different problem. So write the balanced chemical equation. Set up a calculation. Uh, set up calculations. Reactants that would produce the smallest is the limiting reactant. Whatever gives you the smallest amount is the key thing. All right, so here is an example of, Make sure it's balanced. Three, three, should be good. One, yep, one. All right, so what you need to do is set up the stoic to the same product. All right, so if it doesn't tell you, hey, what, which product to go to, just pick one. All right, so if I have, uh, if I have 52.5 grams of calcium carbonate, oh, no. I think I didn't write one more K. Calcium carbonate. Okay, and I write, I'm going to pick, let's just go to iron two carbonate. Arbitrarily pick that one. No reason why, just popped in mind. So I'm going to do stoic to that one. Okay, and then I'm going to say I have 45 grams of, 45 grams of IFE. Uh, PO4. Go to the same iron to carbonate. Okay, so now if I set up my whole problem, blah, 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 whatever one of these is my, what gives me the smallest number, that in turn will make one of these my limiting reactant. So if this number uh, is 40 and this number is 50, this number then then calcium carbonate becomes my limiting reactant. You can set it up, you can do it. That's the process. It's the only thing that's different is a hey, choose the limiting reactant, then the other one would be the excess reactant. Okay? Uh, there's a couple there. This is a this is in your packet. This one is the excess reactant left over. What you do is you go excess or you go limiting reactant stoic to your excess reactant. Okay, so in that case, whatever it is, limiting reactant, go stoic to my excess reactant, and then take uh, the excess reactant original minus the excess reactant from there. What that's going to do 
is that's going to tell you how much is left over. All right, so you can try that, uh, but that's that's how you do. That's a that's a super A level question, but you can you can do the gist on that one. Uh, there's another limiting reactants problem. Set it up. If you got two numbers, how do I know it's a limiting reactant number? You have two values. Um, another quick thing about stoichiometry is called percent yield. So if you have percent yield, all this, all the percent yield equation is, is this. It's like, hey, how good were we at what we did? So percent yield is experimental, which you will always be given that. You have to be given that. That's like, hey, we did this in lab. This is what we got. And then theoretical, all right, is, is your stoichiometric calculation. So in theory, if the reaction goes 100% correct, oh, okay, that's stoic. It's like perfect on paper. Well, we know in the lab that's not the case. Experimental values aren't very good. So in this question here, if you have 10.2 grams of zinc, okay, so I have 10.2 grams of zinc, what would you be your percent yield if the experimental yield of copper, so experimental there is 5.6. So what then I can do is I say, well, all right, what is 10.2 grams of zinc going to get me? It's going to give me how many grams of copper, all right? That is what I call my theoretical. Okay, so then what I can do then to keep my percent yield is take my 5.6 from my experiment, which you gave me, 5.6 grams over uh, whatever this value is right here, your theoretical grams of copper from your stoic times 100. All right, guys, that's it. That's the variations of stoichiometry and...